Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the very first Wellness Wednesday of 2021. I am your host, Christy Lau, and I am the Senior Director at Community Wellness Department with Partners in Care Foundation. Partners in Care is the sponsor for Wellness Wednesday, which is really just meant to be a short burst of something fun, something educational, and something that provides, you know, something that feels good, provides community uh, during a time when maybe we may not be able to be together. Just a couple of logistics for us. Everybody has joined in listen only mode, but that does not mean that you will not be able to engage with today's speakers. If you take a look at your Zoom, you will see two functions that you can use to ask questions. The first one is the chat function. And the second one is the Q&A function. Please, at any point during today's webinar, feel free to use either of those to ask questions. And at the end of the presentation, I will go ahead and I will curate those questions for our speakers. We are so fortunate today to have two great speakers with us to talk about a very important topic, um, home meds which is a medication management program developed by Partners in Care Foundation. Today's presentation is called The Hidden Surprises in Your Medicine Cabinet, and I'm sure that we all can have many of those, right? So today, our key speaker is going to be Amy Adams, who is the Director of Home Meds at Partners in Care Foundation. Amy has a BA in Gerontology from the University of Northern Colorado. Her background and expertise over the last 15 years includes senior transportation, Alzheimer's and caregiver programs, as well as evidence-based programs. She successfully started home meds at the Tarrant County Area Agency on Aging in Fort Worth, Texas. After moving from Texas back to her hometown in Colorado, Amy has been the director of home meds with Partners in Care for the last eight years. Joining Amy today is Dr. Yanea Hall, PharmD, and she will be here to share great information with you and will be here to field some of those more clinical questions that you may have. So without further ado, let me turn it over to Amy and Dr. Hall. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. All right, so next slide, please. All right, so for many of us, um, finding secrets in our medicine cabinet can be very, very tricky. So we often go to our medicine cabinet or drawer for our over-the-counter medications or vitamins, you know, something to maybe alleviate pain. But wouldn't it be nice if we could have our medications in one convenient dose? So in a perfect world, this is exactly what we would like to have, is your doctor prescribe one convenient dose um, you feel better, you feel great, and there's no interactions or reactions to your medications, okay? But in the COVID world that we live in today, many of us are at home and we're really trying to kind of navigate through how do we fill our medications? How do we get to the pharmacy? How do we get back to our physician um, office to get those refills or maybe even talk to our physician about um, a new medication um, or you know, an ailment that you're feeling at that time? Next slide. So today we're gonna kind of have two tracks of information. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, our home meds program that I'm the director of home meds. And we are gonna just briefly talk about this medication program that is analyzed um, through a web-based platform, as well as we have a pharmacist that reviews that information and it's, it's available um, across the country, but what we would really like to offer is um, just some information on how this program can review your medications and keep you safe and um, healthy in your home. So this slide here represents um, a common and costly problem that we see across the country. Adverse drug events often are very, very um, expensive and often happen within our emergency um, department visits each year, as well as our physician office offices. Um, oftentimes with medication related 
um, drug events, we see falls, dizziness, and confusion. Um, those are typically some of the side effects that we you know, may see with medication-related errors. It's very, very costly. So we're looking into the billions of dollars um, with drug-related uh, morbidity and mortality rates. And again, this happens with a lot of our ER, hospital readmissions, um, skilled nursing facilities, when you have to go into a skilled nursing facility, um, maybe because of a fall related injury. But again, very, very costly um, that we see. What's really good though, is that it is preventable. And we see around 25% of these adverse drug events are preventable with various programs and um, communication and discussion with your pharmacist and physician. So it's something that we can um, potentially prevent and that we hope to see. Next slide. So with medications um, and age, uh, we definitely see that medication related problems are estimated to be one of the top five drivers of mortality in um, ages 65 and older. Uh, again, the major causes are potential confusion, depression, falls, um, loss of independence. So there's a lot of things going on with medication related problems. One third of seniors taking five or more medications, which we see very, very often, will have at least one bad drug reaction each year. Two thirds of them will require medica medical attention. So it's very important that as we go through our presentation today that um, the pharmacist is one that could potentially, you know, address those questions and answer the questions for you that you may have about the medications that you're taking. Okay, next slide. So just talking a little bit about care transitions. So care transitions, um, we see often when you're in the hospital and you're going back home um, from the hospital. We see a lot of events that happen when um, patients are discharged from the hospital going home, there's a lot of information that's um, you know, per being presented to you. You wanna get home where you're comfortable. And oftentimes you may be taking medications at the hospital that you may not be taking um, necessarily at home or maybe even the same dosage. So we do see a lot of um, issues with that transition of care. So with programs like home meds and with talking with your pharmacist or doctor, we can prevent some of um, the confusion and um, readmission rates back to the hospital. So we really ask, you know, why not intervene earlier? Why wait for a hospitalization? Let's take care of it first so that doesn't happen. Okay, next slide. So these are two uh, pictures that we got when we completed home assessments. Um, this is what your doctor or pharmacist don't see when they're in, um, when you're in the physician office. So these are very extreme, but we do have, you know, um, patients or clients that have a lot of medications and um, medical, uh, you know, devices in their home that they may not just be able to get a handle on, or they may just need help getting organized. So again, a lot of the programs that are offered can help you kind of alleviate that and get organized so you know exactly the medications that you're taking. Okay, next slide. So just a quick background slide about home meds. So home meds is designed to support um, the home visit programs that you may have, you know, you may have experienced or you may know someone that has had a home visit program. And really what we're trying to do is keep people at home out of the hospital by addressing medication safety. From there, we really the focus is looking at those adverse effects. So again, focusing on the falls, vitals and confusion and then determining if medications may be a part of the cause. Oftentimes we do see, it could be environment, there could be other things going on, but let's eliminate the medication issue first if there is a problem. So Whole Meds is an evidence-based, we are the highest level evidence-based program, tier three, and we, um, it's a web-based risk assessment software. So what, again, we're trying to do is identify and prevent medication-related problems improve medication use, um, and 
Oftentimes our home meds program can be brought to you in the home over video conference call. It can be offered in senior centers or other different programs available in your community. Okay, next slide. So this is this was the best um, picture I could get, but this is our assessment um, that we have that is provided to you as a client um, if you complete the home meds assessment. So it's a one page report that provides all of your um, self-reported conditions, um, all of your current medications, why you're taking the medications, as well as any reactions, um, allergies that you may have. So we often provide this to you, to your caregiver. Um, so the physician, when you go to your next follow-up visit, can understand exactly what you're taking and maybe eliminate some of the questions or concerns that you do have. Okay, next slide. So often, um, this is really what we would like to see for our expected results with home eds. So we wanna see lower cost, um, that again, lower cost for you, for if you go to the ER, mm -hmm. hospital use, better health and better care. Mm -hmm. um, improved medication use and really empowering um, you to help answer those questions that you may have with your doctor. Okay, next slide. Okay, Yenea. Yep. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about that evidence-based uh, portion of home meds that Emmy uh, briefly mentioned. So um, the way that uh, home meds actually works, and I hope that everybody can actually hear me okay, um, is by uh, utilizing protocols. And um, just like we said before, they're evidence-based protocol. And what they're actually going to be doing is actually identifying those high-risk problems that can actually be resolved at home. Uh, one of the most, um, I want to say, used protocols within the software will be the therapeutic duplication. And to link it to one of the examples that Amy provided, uh, that patient or that client that was discharged from the hospital and was taking a specific number of medications at the hospital and didn't have a proper reconciliation with the pharmacist before they got discharged is a potential high risk of be taking two medications from the same drug class. Um, and a good example could be um, a patient is taking a brand name product and a generic product. Um, the hospital might have had in the formulary LASIK. And when the patient came to the pharmacy to pick up their prescription, it might have been dispensed the generic of furosemide. Uh, without the patient knowledge, they might not know. And they might be taking both of those medications and actually having side effects uh, related to that. Um, another protocol that home meds uses um, is actually taking into consideration uh, what medication the patient is taking in the event of a patient reporting a recent fall or uh, confusion. Uh, and oftentimes, uh, our, our patients, when are either discharged from the hospital or even uh, when they see their, their normal uh, 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 practitioner, they might be prescribed an anti-anxiety medication. A good example of this will be Xanax or Oprosolam. Um, and sometimes they don't get the proper canceling and the potential side effects associated with this medication. Um, and they can actually result into falls. Uh, our third protocol is actually not necessarily um, screening for uh, high risk medications, but more of what medications are inappropriate in certain patient groups. Uh, so all the patients that are 80 and above and are actually taking an anti-inflammatory product, for example, ibuprofen, uh, could potentially be a higher risk of bleeding. Um, our cardiovascular protocol or protocol number four actually takes a look at uh, patients that are taking high blood pressure medications or any cardiovascular associated medication. Um, and if uh, inputted into the system, actually have a high blood pressure reading or a low pulse or actually reports a drop in blood pressure from uh, changing positions from a sitting position to a standing position. Um, our dizziness protocol is actually what I like to call a standalone protocol. Um, it's not necessarily associated with any medication, uh, but if we do have a client or a patient, how I like to call being a pharmacist, uh, that actually reports dizziness, uh, we immediately get an alert and the pharmacist can actually review all the medications uh, can actually review all the self-reported conditions and then make an assessment on what could be the root cause of that patient having um, a dizzy, uh, uh, or reported dizziness. Um, and our newest protocol is actually our opioid use protocol. Um, and this has in the 
recent years been uh, very, very uh, important for us to actually take into consideration when we actually make uh, recommendations to our elderly patients. Uh, we can actually see uh, what dose the patient is taking. Is there actually um, an alternative product that the patient could potentially be taking that uh, is opioid uh, free and could potentially have the same effects that the pain medication that the patient is taking without uh, the actual side effects. If we can move to the next slide. Um, medication interaction is uh, another huge um, portion of what we do uh, as a pharmacist in home meds uh, or working with home meds. And I think mainly it's because sometimes our clients or patients forget that uh, prescription medic, like what they get in the pharmacy as a prescription is not the only drug per se that they're actually taking. Uh, you can go over the counter and purchase a bottle of Advil and not think about it as an actual medication that can interact with something else that you're taking. So duplications is one of those um, high risk uh, uh, events that we can actually detect when we're using home meds. Uh, again, the patient might have a prescription for ibuprofen, goes and buys over the counter Advil PM to help them go to sleep and body ache and don't, don't actually realize that it, Advil contains ibuprofen and they're already taking ibuprofen, so it's actually getting them or putting them at high risk of bleeding. Uh, supplements is another group of uh, products that our elderly patients take. And again, we kind of forget about the potential interactions that a supplement can have. Uh, a good example that we're listing here is ginkgo biloba that is so widely used for uh, improving cognitive function or, or, or dementia patients. Um, and the patient might also be taking warfarin. Um, and actually ginkgo has a negative effect on warfarin that can actually increase the levels of the medication uh, at, a, uh, at a potential dangerous level. Uh, foods, I mean, who would think that food would actually interact with a product that a doctor might have prescribed? But uh, there are specific uh, food categories or specific fruits uh, that can actually have an adverse effect and, and, and prescriptions that are very uh, well known and prescribed to our patients. In this case, we're uh, listing grapefruit juice um, and Lipitor or atorvastatin, which is cholesterol medication. Um, grapefruit juice can actually increase the levels of Lipitor uh, that can potentially be dangerous to a patient. Next slide. So what is our role in all this? Um, I think our pharma, uh, I would like to say, to say that pharmacists are one of the most um, accessible healthcare providers out there. Uh, most of the time, COVID aside, uh, you don't need an appointment to actually talk to a pharmacist. You can just approach the pharmacy, uh, the pharmacy counter and just ask to speak to a pharmacist and, and we're there. Um, we're actually able to provide medication counseling even if you didn't pick up the prescription at our store. Uh, we administer immunizations. Uh, we can actually provide disease management and support. Um, and what we have been saying through the presentation, we can actually identify the problems um, and actually talk to your doctor and try to uh, propose uh, new either treatment options or initiatives for us to be able to help you uh, during the treatment of your condition. Uh, we also uh, we verify and review your drug uh, list and, and can actually potentially uh, detect interactions even before they actually happen. Um, and the most important part, we can actually educate you about the medications and the medication risks associated to um, specifically newly prescribed drugs. Next slide. So talk to us. Why not? Um, one of the uh, main reasons that pharmacists become uh, so important and crucial in the treatment of a patient is when a patient is actually seeing uh, multiple providers um, or actually has to pick up the medications at two different pharmacies. So you might have your primary care provider and you also have your cardiologist that is actually treating your blood pressure problems or your heart condition. And, Sometimes your primary care provider might not communicate as fast as they should with your specialist. And uh, there could potentially be room there for drug interactions or therapeutic duplication. Uh, the same thing goes with multiple pharmacists. Your uh, insurance plan might requ uh, require you to use a mail order pharmacy for your maintenance medications or your diabetes medication, your blood pressure medication, but then 
you go to your local pharmacy to pick up your antibiotics and any other acute condition treatment. And again, your local pharmacy might not have a history of what your mail order pharmacy has been dispensing. Tell us what over-the-counter medications you're taking. Uh, as you were able to see in our previous slide, there are multiple interactions with over-the-counter products. Um, if you can actually get to a local pharmacy, especially now with the pandemic, some pharmacies are actually available to provide appointments over the phone, um, and they can have this conversation with you um, over the phone as well. Um, if you have problems actually reading the prescription label that could potentially lead you to take your medication incorrectly, tell the pharmacist as well. Uh, we sometimes can either increase the font size of your prescription label or can provide magnifying glasses or, or things of that nature so you can actually have a better uh, grasp of what you're actually trying to read. Um, and last but not least, educate yourself. With every new medication that you receive at a pharmacy, you're probably going to receive a patient education pamphlet. If it's not written in a, at a level that you're actually able to understand, ask the pharmacist, hey, what are the risks of me taking this medication? Uh, what are potential interactions? What can I expect about this medication? Uh, and trying to learn as much as you can from it. Next slide. So I briefly mentioned this, but with every new medication, uh, we are, by law, obligated to actually provide uh, patient education. So if you do get a new prescription, if when you're picking up the product at the pharmacy, uh, you don't have the opportunity to talk to the pharmacist. Don't be afraid to actually pick up the phone and call the pharmacy again and, and try to talk to the pharmacist and, and ask these particular questions. And this by no means an actually an all-inclusive list. It's just that these are the most common questions that uh, we come across in our practice. So can I take this particular medication with something else? What are certain foods and beverage and any other product that I should be avoiding while I'm taking this medication? Just a quick example of that was if you love grapefruit juice and you're prescribed a cholesterol medication, make sure that you actually can take those together. Uh, some of the side effects that some of our patients can be having is because they're taking older medications at the same time. Ask the pharmacist how she should be able to space out your medication so you're not too dizzy or too drowsy uh, during the day. Um, how will the drug work in my body? If you're prescribed a pain medication, sometimes we think, hey, if I took an ibuprofen, I don't know, at nine o'clock today, by 9.15, I should have no pain whatsoever. And that's actually not the right expectation of the product. So if you think that in 15 minutes, the medication is going to work and you don't see the results and you're tempted to take another dose, and that can potentially actually lead to side effects or even uh, potential interactions that we don't want to see. Uh, because once the patient actually develops a side effect, there, there's um, clinical trials out there that show that if you have a side effect to a medication, you're less likely to continue to take that medication as prescribed. So we want to make sure that we avoid that as well. Um, if there are any other um, uh, additional information that the pharmacist can uh, provide to you because you don't understand what is being provided, maybe a graph or a diagram, uh, maybe it might be used, um, easier for you to understand. Uh, that's also an option that the pharmacist uh, should be able to provide as well. Next slide. Okay, you, thanks, Maria. Appreciate that information. It's so helpful. So just to, um, we wanted to just present to you a couple of our success stories that we've seen um, from a couple different organizations that utilize home meds. Um, this specific story of success, um, we, Mrs. M, <laughs> she was 66 years young, was taking 29 different medications and that included prescription, over-the-counter, as well as vitamins and minerals. Uh, she did have two dizziness alerts that were generated, and unfortunately, she was taking all of the medications all at one time in the morning with her breakfast. Um, we were able to remove two meds um, from the client list, and once there was um, a recommendation from the pharmacist and the physician advised out to space out her medications, um, the dizziness decreased and um, she was much happier taking a couple, you know, two different medications that she really didn't need at the time. So that was one of our success stories. And next slide. 
And this was Mr. J. He was 78 years old. He was taking 21 different medications. He had two fall alerts generated, um, which means he had actually fallen within a three month time frame. He was again taking all his medications at one time with his coffee at breakfast. We were able to remove six medications from his list. He was taking more, um, he was taking two of the same medication um, multiple times. He actually was able to save money on his monthly prescription cost, which was very important to him and his family. And once that advisement from the pharmacist was given to take the meds in the morning at lunch and kind of space them out, um, the dizziness and fall risk um, had decreased. And after a year, we did a follow-up and he had not reported a recent fall after we had adjusted those medications. So there's definitely, you know, things that you could do to learn about your medications, learn to ask questions with your pharmacist and physician um, to help you, you know, just feel better and stay healthy um, and at home and safe. Okay. Next slide. So again, um, this just kind of sums it up. If you're happy and you know it, thank your meds, but also take your meds correctly. I think that's the, the takeaway is making sure that you understand the medications you're taking, but um, you know, again, knowing that if you're taking them correctly, you'll be able to stay um, as healthy as possible in your home. Okay, next slide. Okay, so this is our, um, if you have any questions, we do have an email here. Um, if you have information or you'd like to look at, you know, more information about home meds, you can go to our website but I will pass this off to Christy. Thank you so much, Amy and Yunea. That was wonderful information that I'm sure many of us didn't know that we needed this morning, um, given this time of you know, COVID and being home so much. It, you know, we've really got the opportunity to maybe open up our medicine cabinets and, and take a look, right? And, and see if any of this information is something that we need to apply. Um, I think that it was so wonderful, the information that you shared that, you know, take your meds and take them right. But the great point that you made was you don't have to do it alone, right? Your pharmacist um, is available to you and can really provide assistance that maybe you didn't even know you could get. So thank you so much for that. We want to open it up for questions. So again, there are two ways that you can enter questions, the first of which is the Q&A function, <clears throat> and the second is the chat function. So if you go ahead and locate those, please feel free to type in your questions. I do see a couple. So the first one that I saw come through was, is there a list you might have that would outline medication and food supplement interactions? Something you might be able to recommend. Yeah, I think that's definitely, uh, and I'm not sure who's uh, interested, but um, if we can actually take advantage of the information provided in this slide, uh, either homemeds at PICF.org or perhaps even Amy's email, um, we should be able to compile, um, obviously there are thousands and thousands of medications and supplements out there that we wouldn't be able to actually include everything, but uh, probably the most common ones we should be able to uh, uh, compile the list and, and provide it. Thank you. I do see another question. Uh, what is the title of today's presentation? So today's presentation was titled The Surprises You May Find in Your Cabinet. Um, so certainly there may be other surprises in there, but today we talk specifically about medications. I do already see some interest coming through about the list. So definitely the best place it seems would be to send your interest to homemeds at picf.org. You have it on the screen right here. And that will be the best way um, to kind of close that. Another question here, are there tips on disposal of medications? If I can unmute myself fast enough. <laughs> Um, most of the time, um, so obviously we don't want um, our patients or our clients to be dumping everything on the toilet and stuff like that. So uh, the fire departments are usually a good source of uh, information when it comes to disposal. Uh, sometimes depending on um, in your state, uh, local pharmacists can actually take back, they have take back programs. Uh, 
I'm not sure in California if that's actually uh, a possibility, but the fire department should be able to point you in the right direction. Uh, sometimes you can also buy uh, this little, I call them carbon bags, just for the lack of better words, but it actually has a, a chemical on it that deactivates the, the active ingredients of the medication and you can just uh, mix everything together um, in that bag with a little bit of water and then you can actually throw it away in your garbage. But uh, I always like to uh, point our clients that if their pharmacy doesn't have take back programs to go to their fire department and they should be able to point them in the right direction. Thank you. This is a question that we get frequently. Um, is it possible to get a copy of the slideshow? So I've got good news for everybody. Um, Every single one um, of these Wellness Wednesday presentations has been recorded, uh, with the exception of one of them. Um, all of these recordings, um, including the view of the slideshow, is going to be posted on our Partners in Care Foundation website. The goal for us is to get that up there within the first quarter um, of 2021. So do stay tuned. If you are on our mailing list, which is how you may have found out about Partners in Care's Wellness Wednesday series to begin with, you will get notification once all of those videos are up. You may be able to catch up on things that you know you might have missed earlier in the series or maybe want to watch something again. So do stay tuned. Thank you so much for the inquiry and the continued interest. Got another question here. Where is a safe place to store medications? Keep them coming. <laughs> um, so I always recommend everybody, and I know that sometimes it could be common sense, but out of the reach of children, out of the reach of uh, elderly patients that could be uh, cognitive impaired uh, to make sure that they're not taking something that it wasn't prescribed to them. But temperature wise, the best way to do it is if you do have the uh, box that the medication came in, look at the recommendations of the manufacturer. If it actually can be a store at room temperature, you want to keep it in a dry place. Uh, you don't want to keep things in the bathroom. There's too much humidity there. It might get into your tablets. Um, if it's a medication that needs to be refrigerated, uh, most likely your pharmacist uh, at the time of dispensing will tell you to keep it on the refrigerator. Uh, sometimes products that are dispensed as a refrigerated product might be able to be kept at room temperature when you get at home, but definitely try to stay away from the bathroom or any place with high humidity. Uh, or I know that this is going to sound out there, but I have had patients that try to hide their medications inside the oven to make sure that nobody else is going to be able to reach it. So that can actually get really, really hot, even if the oven is not on, just because it's so, uh, you know, it's an enclosed uh, environment. So make sure that it's open, dry, um, and it's actually away from the direct sunlight exposure and the reach of children. Great, thank you. And somebody said out of the reach of pets too. Can't forget about those pets. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, please go ahead and enter them in the question and answer function, or you may also use the chat. I see some gratitude coming forward for the presentation. I know that this is always something that people wonder about. Another question here, has there been an effort to create a statewide database which pharmacists could reference when prescribing medications to avoid duplication? That's a very good question. Um, we actually have, uh, actually nationwide, we started with opioid medications. Uh, probably all states right now are um, actually enforced to uh, report uh, any controlled substance that is being dispensed to a patient. Uh, and any pharmacy within that state obviously has access to um, that list of medications. Uh, I think that was a great start because uh, we started with controlled substance, but uh, I think that opened the door to potentially have a database that you actually have access to all that. Uh, by all means, the Walgreens, the CVS, the Walmarts, the big chains that are actually nationwide currently, uh, if you fill the prescriptions within uh, that chain, they actually have access to the medications that you have filled at other stores. 
Uh, but I think there is a lot of work that needs to be done uh, for us to cross that barrier between uh, different pharmacists. But that's a great question, and it's definitely something that is in, in our minds. Uh, and we continually, continuously uh, are covering in state board meetings and, 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 and all the good stuff. So hopefully there will be uh, more to come um, at a later time. But um, yeah, it's definitely something that it will be extremely advantageous to everybody. Thank you. Another question here, do pharmacists have knowledge on holistic treatments as well? So some herbs or natural remedies that may have complications too? So although um, holistic treatment might not be as um, well, I guess, studied, uh, uh, for us to actually have a, a, a broader understanding of how can actually interact with uh, current prescription medications, uh, we do have access to database and the most common use holistic products, uh, most of the time we do have access to it. Um, and the more and more patients in our community that actually are taking those products that more and more verse that we get in the product interaction, but uh, we're still definitely a great resource with drug interaction. So if you do have uh, that type of supplement that have been prescribed or recommended uh, by a different provider, uh, make sure that you ask your pharmacist because chances are that somebody else in your community is also taking it and they actually have seen it already. Thank you. Do a last call for questions here. Again, go ahead and use the Q and A function or the chat. Can anyone join Home Meds? Good question. So, um, depending on the community that you live in, um, we do have many organizations that offer the Home Meds assessment through um, a community-based organization. So. If you are in the uh, LA County area, um, we do have a, a home meds that's offered through one of our um, grant funded programs. So we can get more information to you on that. Um, so again, depending on which community you live in, which state you live in, we can get you more information on that and if it's available. And you can always email us at homeeds at PICF.org to, we can reach you there. And is home meds free or is there a cost associated with it? Um, for the client patient, um, it is a free program, um, a free assessment that is completed um, that's supported by the community-based organization and funded by the community-based organization. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any last call for questions? Lots of thank yous coming through. Great. All right. So as Amy mentioned, um, if you have any other outstanding questions or if you're interested in finding out if there's a community-based organization near you that offers home meds, you can email homemeds at picf.org. As she also alluded to here in Los Angeles, Partners in Care Foundation is one of those community-based organizations that does provide home meds assessments. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a little bit. But before I do, I just wanna say thank you so much to Amy and to Dr. Yanea Hall. Um, this was such great information uh, that you shared with us all this morning, a great way to kick off our series for the year 2021. Thank you. So for more information um, or to enroll in an evidence-based program, we have programs ranging from uh, chronic disease self-management, fall prevention, physical activity, you can visit our website at www.picf.org slash online dash wellness dash programs. And as a part of participating in one of those chronic disease self-management programs, we do have funding to provide home meds assessments. So go ahead and check out those programs. And that particular site has an area where you can submit your interest and we will reach back out to you. Again, here is the email address where you can direct general inquiries about home meds, including that list we talked about a little bit earlier about um, drug, food, and other interactions that may arise. Our next Wellness Wednesday presentation is going to be talking about nutrition education for all, for everybody. Everyone's got access, and that's going to be from Rika Drennan from Fresh Baby. 
That will be on January 27th at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time, so same time, same channel. Thank you everyone for showing up this morning, for joining us for today's Wellness Wednesday, and again, thank you to our speakers. I hope that everyone is able to take care and be well, and we are looking forward to seeing you next time, January 27th. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.